And welcome back to Snowfox Show. We are playing Mamiya, A Shared Illusion of World's End. We're doing a serious one today. Fall down. Let's go. Nuts me died. Um, did someone pass away? I forgot, I forgot I said it was space. Nope, space doesn't do it. It's not space, it's click. It is click. It has to be click on screen though. So you may have to see my mouse the whole time. It's gonna be awful. Yes, they're holding a funeral for a boy called Natsume. <laughs> Natsume, yep. Natsume? I had the same trouble. Yep. <laughs> well, um, I think I might have known him. Oh, really? Probably, at least I think so. In that case, why not bring him some flowers? Huh? Can I? Of course, I'm certain. He would appreciate it. I'm getting a bit tense. No, it's gonna be okay. I just need to go inside, or get inside. After muttering that to myself, I nodded and took a step forward. Ah. Only to end up bumping into someone. Ah, uh, sorry. The pink-haired man glanced at me. I clicked his tongue and headed into the church. Did he just click his tongue at me? I opened the door. A solemn atmosphere hung heavy in the air as I stepped into the church. Nuts me. How did you do a click? Would be. Yeah, it's like. There we go. Some wept, others looked ahead in silence. Were they all reminiscing about the day they spent with her? I hope they are. The service would begin in seconds, and I was the only one still, uh, I was the only one still standing. I hurried and scanned my surroundings for a place where I could sit. I... Now, as I'm pretty sure these do actually matter, because there are multiple endings. And we are playing a visual novel here, if no one can tell. We are playing Mamiya. So, we're just going to choose the answers that best suit us, and see where we go, okay? Because I would definitely take the one close to the exit. I took the seat close to the exit. Um, I'll sit next to you if you don't mind. Not at all. I kept gazing at the flowers far ahead, while waiting for ceremony to begin. Then came the coffin. Everyone around me muttered prayers in remembrance of Natsume. A chant played as the coffin was carried over. Hearing the priest talk, all I could think about was its contents. I said we're doing a serious one today. <laughs> a while later, the service began in earnest, accompanied by the organ music. The attendees stood up and brought flowers to the coffin. A student with dark skin approached the exit. It exit. Um, I'm curious. Finding myself somewhat curious about him, I decided to follow him with my gaze. The dark skinned student took some of the gathered white flowers and approached the coffin. His amber eyes were directed right at it. I could see the strength of his will reflected in them. His graceful fingers did not tremble one bit. As he placed his flowers, he slightly parted his lips, almost as, almost like he was about to say something. In the end, all he did was furrow his brow and close his eyes before ultimately returning to his seat.
The one to approach the coffin next was a dark-haired student with a mole under his eye. I'm curious. I found myself somewhat curious about him, I decided to follow him with my gaze. He slowly approached the coffin with a downcast look. Snow-white flowers he carried seemed perfect match for his own prim and proper aura. As he bent over to place his flowers, his glossy locks swayed forward, hiding his eyes. His useful eyes, his useful looks made him appear almost ethereal, and had completely captivated my attention. I can do ethereal, but I can't do <laughs> just looks. Come on. He then slowly stood up and returned to his seat, and with his head hanging ever lower than before. It's unfortunate I have to voice everything, huh? <laughs> Ruffling his pinkish hair, a man with an intense look on his face stepped forward. I am curious. I found myself somewhat curious about him. I decided to follow him with my gaze. Oh, not on the screen. Oops. <laughs> you have to click on the screen to progress. He approached the coffin with a rough, unsteady gait. By the way, he took the flowers was anything but. His hair covered most of his face, preventing me from discerning this... Yeah, discerning his expression. In contrast to his earlier demeanor, there was a certain melancholy in the way he placed down his flowers. I was left in awe by the strange uncanny imbalance. Next, the coffin was approached by a tall boy in a school uniform. I'm curious. I found myself somewhat curious about him, I decided to follow him with my gaze. His considerable height would no doubt make him stand out in any crowd. He walked with a straightforward stance, giving me the, uh, the impression of someone with a noble, righteous soul. Even the white flowers he carried seemed to match him in terms of sheer dignity and grace. His large eyes gleamed in genuine grief. That's me. He uttered the name in a voice so low, you'd have to strain your ears to hear him. Once all the attendees had set the flowers, the funeral came to a close, with a few words addressing the bereaved family. Surrounded by family leaving the hall, I... Hmm... Do we leave or do we stay put? Because we're definitely not going deeper in. I'd probably go outside, right? Wanting some fresh air, I decided to step outside for a moment. The cold December air outside the church felt unusually pleasant. I walked around for a bit until my eyes met another student's. Ah. Hello. Oh, hello. Were you also attending Natsume's funeral? Yeah, I was. I'm pretty sure he meant a lot to me. You're pretty sure? That was an oddly vague way of putting it. Oh, sorry. I was very young at the time, so I'm not entirely sure. But not to me. Probably lived in my neighborhood. We often played together. I can remember it like it was yesterday. On an especially snowy day in the winter, we ended up building a snowman together. We looked around for sticks and leaves to give it face to. I was in charge of making the face, and I remember making use of all the stuff we gathered together. We used red fruits for the eyes, a le uh, large leaf to place in the nose, and an arch stick for its mouth. Was it cute? Oh, yes, very. Looking back at it, Natsumi probably just wanted me to have the most fun part. Yeah. He was so nice. Now he's dead, isn't he? can't see him again. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I got a little carried away. Oh, it's fine. I'm actually glad uh, to have heard a new Natsume story I wasn't aware of. Really, I'm glad you liked it. Um, yes? Well, it might be rude of me to say this, and I don't want you to get upset, but... You kind of remind me of him a little bit. I see. Goodbye then. Take care. You too. A person's death. This was the first time I experienced the death of someone I knew. All my grandparents were thankful still are thankfully still alive, 
so I never actually attended a funeral before. The church has adopted an unusual scent, one of mourning, that made the place feel almost like it's been cut off from the rest of the world. I guess I'll never see nuts me again. The clouds gathered above were as dark as my mood. What did it mean for a person to die? Nuts may have stepped off the stage of my life for good. And so, I would now continue to live a life filled with people other than him. Will I eventually die too? What did it mean to die? Where did people go when they died? Someone like me, who had his hands full with the present, the very concept seemed fundamentally alien. Ah. I felt something moist on my nose. I put my hand out and immediately noticed a few raindrops on it. The droplets began to multiply, eventually filling the ground around me. It had begun to rain. Ah! <laughs> I used my bag as a makeshift umbrella as I hurried to find shelter from the rain. A simple rainfall was enough to dispel all thoughts of the funeral from my mind. The world would soon end. I didn't know how much truth there was to it. The people on the TV, the news, made it out to be a big deal. You could even hear people discussing it in class. The days went by as usual, without anyone truly comprehending that the world would end soon. Or soon end? Soon end. Whoops, I said it wrong. <laughs> I still don't quite understand why I was there. I was certain that the end would happen in the blink of an eye. It would be simple and anticlimactic, like the burst of a soap bubble. Kenkeland presents. Oh, not the click. Not the click. Whoops. <laughs> Soon are 10. Ba, ba, ba. Mamiya, a shared illusion of the world's end. Oh, it's hard to read if you don't already know what it was. Good morning, Suo. Good morning. Did you catch yesterday's show? Yeah, it's still great. I wake up in the morning, go to school, and chat with my classmates, take classes. I've always been surrounded by other people. Each and every one of them were thoroughly interesting and unique. Thanks to them, I could spend every day with a smile. This is a very different pace than the last. <laughs> I'm back. Welcome, Kato. What's for dinner, Mom? Hamburg steak. I know how much you love it. Not, not hamburger steak. Is it ham? Is Hamburg steak something? I don't know what that is. Yeah. Hi, Dad. Welcome, Kato. Wow, you're home early today. Yeah, I actually managed to finish up all my work earlier than expected. Kato, have you washed your hands? I heard Ryotas caught a cold the other day. You should be more careful. Okay, Mom. For as long as I could remember, my mother had always uh, busied herself in the kitchen. I like how we went straight from a funeral to like, ah, time to return home and have dinner. <laughs> Man, that funeral was a drag. <laughs> she was a great cook, and all my friends who tasted her dishes told me how lucky I was. I know from reference, of course, but the words still filled me with pride. My father worked as a policeman, and would only come home late at night, if at all. But when he did, he always picked my back. Uh, he always pat my back with a reassuring... <laughs> he always put my back! <laughs> it's not even close to the right word, come on. With a reassuring smile. His strong, firm hands made me want to grow up like him. Kato, we're leaving tomorrow. Are you sure you'd be alright on your own? Mom, I'll be fine. I know how much detergent to use and where we kept the emergency money. Also, I know the number I need to call to reach you. You've drilled this to me a million times now. Okay, if you say so. Come on, Kato's already 50. He does not look 50. <laughs> Didn't this say he's like outlandishly tall for some reason? Nah, whatever. It'd be a good experience for him. I made an insertive nod. My folks used their days to arrange a trip overseas. Some parents would devote their attention to their uh, kids, but mine still enjoyed having some f uh, alone time together. I found that to be great, honestly. I was hoping that I would be uh, able to be like that when I got older. A few things worried me, but at the same time, I could never bring myself to force them to stay. 
I didn't particularly lack anything in life. People were nice to me, and I enjoyed every single day to follow us. Ah, oh, is this one going to be relatable? God damn it. The first thing was the personality test. I wasn't aware sitting at the back of a church and leaving early is like, ah, oh, you had a normal middle class life. <laughs> Yet I felt like there was something missing. Like a puzzle. <laughs> Piece of a puzzle. So I continued searching for it. I felt almost like there was a snow white mist blanketing my otherwise saturated life, blurring its outlines. All I wanted was a bit of adventure. That was probably it. The person being necessarily me. That person being necessary to me was like nothing. <laughs> was like no more than a convenient excuse. That's a slightly weird sentence there. <laughs> Have you heard, Sura? Class activities are cancelled due to the rain. What? Awesome. We'll get to go home early today. I'm going to spend my whole day watching TV. I forgot my umbrella. Alright. Ah! I jumped to the rain with a yell. Hmm? On the way home, I spotted something passing by a dark. A place normally I wouldn't have noticed on the usual day. In retrospect, it might have been fate rather than the sheer coincidence that brought me here. The park was completely deserted due to the rain. So I had fought that, but I no so I had fought, but then I noticed a person sitting on the ground. Almost like they were pretending to be another uh, piece of the playground equipment. Hey, it's another one of the boys. He... Oh, I can't remember his description. He was the dark-skinned one? Is that what it was? I can't remember. Yeah? I hurried to the side. I hurried to their side and desperately called out to them. Um, excuse me? Had and droplets of lane, rain trickled down and the lashes of his closed eyelids. Didn't seem like he'd wake up. I carefully touched his neck to check for a pulse. And that was when I noticed he would, him shivering. This is an emergency. His dark, almost foreign-looking skin was deathly cold to the touch. He'd freeze to death if he stayed out here. But he really... Sorry, it's December, isn't it? I was going to say, how is he freezing to death in the rain? I'm like, no, it's, it is mid-December. It probably is cold. All right. I took out a towel I had originally packed for the uh, club practice and began drying his hair. Please hold on. Um, let's see. In that moment... And his eyes slightly opened. His amber gaze bore into me. I found myself gasping. It seemed almost like a pair of amber eyes, but the only source of color in the heavy December rain. Mm -hmm. Stepping back to reality, oops, there goes gravity. Oops, there goes gravity. <laughs> I tried to address again, but couldn't help it. <laughs> his eyes closed again before you could say anything. Ah, I had a bad feeling about this. Clutching his hand, I realized he had grown even colder. What, what do I do? There was no one around to ask for help. I was the only one that could save him. Um, can you walk? The young Emma gave a slight nod. I had to help him. There was no one else, or else no one else would. No, there was no one else who would. Whoops. After I could get my mind. God, I'd be terrible at doing audiobooks, but <laughs> Try to do like the Snowfox audiobook. People like, ah, oh, he walked down the street. I mean, he walked down the app. I, I mean, just like every second, like sentence is like some sort of like mixed up word. <laughs> After making it in my mind, I had to lean on my shoulder. I had him lean on my shoulder and start carrying him away as the rain beat down on us. Back home, I made him lie down on the sofa and headed to the bathroom. Uh, headed for the bathroom. After war, we get up the water. I hurried back to him with bath towels. Oh my god, he's doing first aid correctly. Because if, if, if he's freezing to death, uh, well, if, if okay, so if your hand's completely frozen, uh, well, not completely frozen, but like, if it's like uh, really cold, you're supposed to have like the warm water to gradually heat it back up. Because uh, it's not supposed to be hot, or that'd be more damaging. Yeah, way to go, Suo. 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 I just probably wiped the cold water off him, hoping it would lead it. Uh, Hoping this would warm him up a bit. So he's putting the warm water on him to help the limbs that are cold. And he's putting, he's drying him off. Ah, oh, he's doing so good. His eyes began to tremble as light pink towel rubbed against his dark, almost cat-like hair. Is he a cat? He better not be a cat. <laughs> as his breathing intensified, I felt relief wash over me. Oh, you're finally a wit. The next moment, however, he instantly pushed me aside and put some distance between the two of us. Beyond the curtain of his still wet locks, the young man's amber eyes were like daggers piercing my skin. 
Where am I? Huh? Um, I took a step forward, still wondering how to answer. I realized there was something off about him. <laughs> his breathing was unnaturally heavy and ragged. As he took a scanning glance around the room, looking positively wide-eyed, the young man grew even paler than before. Are you okay? When I took a few more steps towards him, the dark-haired young man grabbed a pair of scissors lying on next to our phone and pointed them straight at me. This is why you should never store scissors next to your phone, guys. Like, I'm immediately in danger, aren't I? I'm in danger. <laughs> Exclaim. Ah, where am I? Ah, uh, my knees trembled like leaves in the wind. I was all of a sudden paralyzed by fear. Why did I bring this person? <laughs> I've had some guy dying in the street. I'm like, you know what I should do? I should bring this guy home. Not to the hospital or anything. I should just bring him into my house. I'm sure when he wakes up, he won't be confused and merely afraid of me with his sisters. God damn. <laughs> my parents weren't home. It wouldn't be for a while. I was at a loss of what I should do next. The man still pales, pales a ghost, raises his voice to a yell, almost as if to drag my inner thoughts into the open. Answer me! Where am I? <laughs> this is my house. And why am I here? <laughs> but, well, answer me. He stepped forward as if trying to force an answer out of me. This brought me closer to the scissors. My eyes were glued to their menacing sharp tip. Ah. Uh, I found you unconscious in the park, and uh, you were soaking wet, so, uh, in the park? Yes. The young man paused to think for a moment. I kept the scissors pointing at me. What did you do to me? Huh? Answer me. Nothing. I took you home, dried you off, like, put, put some water on your hand or something. I heard you here from the park, dried you off with a towel. Yep, exactly. That's all. But you forgot to put the water on the hand part, you know. We, we made him slightly wetter and slightly drier, so. I looked up. His prior aminosity was gone from him. He now stood there with a downcast look, preventing me from reading his expression. I see. You were trying to help me, huh? Huh? Caught off guard by his gentle tone of voice, my mind was rendered completely blank for a brief moment. The young man then placed the scissors back on the table and turned around to leave. But wait! <laughs> I already warmed the bath. You you could um use it if you like. Or we could use it together or not pass. <laughs> but it's still raining outside. You might catch a cold. Like you did literally before. <laughs> Enough. Let me out. His pain tone made me let for a grasp. For a short while, the only sound of the room the only sound in the room was a soft pattering of water trickling down onto the floor from his clothes. Do not change his clothes. Like, that that's a better way to dry off someone, right? Keep your distance from me. And with that, he disappeared into the rain. I stood in the foyer for a while longer, after he'd left. Foyer? Foyer. I should have tried to stop him. Though even I wasn't quite sure why I'd want to do that. Especially after how terrifying our first encounter had been. Which part? The part where he's dying or the part where he tried to stab me? <laughs> They're both terrifying. Speaking of which... No, so we met him at a funeral first. <laughs> the funeral wasn't terrifying. I didn't actually ask his name. That's sort of one thing, though. I never forget the color of those eyes. Amber. A very natural color of eye. A nice yellow eye. Like a cat. It's almost like a cat. Ah. What's wrong, sir? You look down. A little, yeah. I heard your parents went off on a trip the other day. Finding it hard to cope on your own? Ha! <laughs> my own. I had something over yesterday. <laughs> yeah, well, you could say that. If you need anything, feel free to come over. I'm sure my mom would love to see you. Thanks. I glanced at the widow. It had misted over and was covered in large droplets of water. It's raining again. Not exactly the kind of weather I expected in December. You expect snow. Like, why is it raining so much? <laughs> You'd surely catch a cold if you stay out there in a time like this. A cold would be the least of your worries. You could even die. Have you noticed the themes of death in this? So, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. I'm fine. 
As I touched the cold glass, the tip of my finger got a little wet from the moisture. What would happen to pers if a person in this uh, in this cold spread across their entire body? What would happen if to a person if this cold spread across? Okay, I can't see. It's kind of another weird sentence. It's so cold. My finger still hadn't completely dried off uh, by the time class started. With a umbrella in hand. Oh my god, we remember the umbrella time. I took my usual route home. Oh. I tried my best not to think about it. Yet before I knew it, there I was in front of the same park. I couldn't believe that I actually was trying to run home and. Uh, I couldn't believe I was actually trying to run into that man again. I shouldn't do this. There's no way he'd be here again. I was just about to leave when I spotted something moving near the park's playground equipment. No way! <laughs> before I could have time, even think of the things my body made a move on its own. Is he dead again? Just as I thought. Uh, I was that. It was that man from the other day. I moved closer to address him, but as I did, his pain expression flashed from my mind. Keep your distance from me. It would probably be better if I listened to his advice. My actions might only lead up, uh, end up irritating me. I forced my eyes shut and attempted to leave when... Ah? Uh, exclaim! I heard a muffled groan. Getting too involved would be a bad idea. It'd just be a bother to him. Despite my best efforts at self-restraint, I end up turning toward the direction of his voice. Ah! You're bleeding! How do you keep getting injured in this park? The sound of blood made me immediately rush to his side. Um, excuse me? Taking a quick, sharp breath, the man wouldn't even open his eyes. Excuse me? I wanted to talk to him. I want to say his name and make him feel safe. Name I don't I didn't even know. My lips trembled, unable to form any mean, uh, meaningful sentence. He still wasn't opening his eyes. Maybe I was maybe I was sticking my nose in somewhere I don't belong. He was still alive. I guess I could just leave him to die. That's that's always an option. I'm sorry. But I can't leave you like this. Nope, I guess we can't leave him. I grabbed his arm, slid over my shoulder. He seemed to have been bleeding from his stomach. While picking him up, I tried my best not to touch the area of his body. Please hold on. I headed home, the only difference between today and yesterday being the fact that I, s that I now had an umbrella. So this is two days in a row this guy's almost dying, right? <laughs> so what, he got stabbed in the park and we're just like dragging him home? I don't think he's going to be too happy when he wakes up and be like, where am I? <laughs> I know this roof. He's like, I don't know the ceiling. He's like, he's like I know the ceiling. <laughs> I sat down in an armchair and focused my gaze on a singular point. The dark-skinned youth was resting on my two-seater sofa. The towel I had placed over his stomach was stained w red with blood. I desperately hoped that it would not spread any further. Barely able to breathe, I crossed my hands and waited. The man's ear made a twitch. Yeah. <laughs> you mustn't push yourself. The wound it looks pretty deep as it is. Pressing the towel against his stomach, the young man carefully sat up on the sofa. Is this your doing? Yeah. Why? Weren't you listening to me yesterday? I mean, it looked pretty serious. I'm sorry for being meddlesome. I promise it's the last time. And it might be difficult. Uh, please try not to move, at least until the bleeding stops. He slowly touched the towel with his dark, slender fingers and watched as the blood continued to spread. The silence in the room felt like it would go on forever. At long last, he inhaled a short breath, opened his mouth to speak. Where am I? Maybe you've been here before. <laughs> huh? At, at my house. That's, that's, that's not what I meant. Asking, where is this place? I furrowed my brows, unable to comprehend the meaning of his question. Realizing that he'd been getting no answer from me, no one continued taking great pains to squeeze out uh, each word. Yesterday, I walked all over this town, but I couldn't recognize a single place I visited. Huh? Actually, I don't even remember anything from before I woke up yesterday. But what do you mean? The young man's tone grew heavy, if he himself had difficulty believing his own words. I can't remember anything. He has amnesia. 
it's, it's that easy. Did you forget the word amnesia as well? Not where I live, nor what I was even doing there in the first place. Clutching his head, the man cast his uh, gaze downwards. In other words, you have amnesia. Yes, he knows what amnesia is. <laughs> like, this should be a drawn out thing. I never thought a day would come that I'd ever say this kind of thing. In lieu of a response, the young man knit his brows and closed his eyes. That alone answered my question better than any words could have. Yeah. The room was completely shrouded in silence. Even the piano stopped. <laughs> so much so that even the ticking of the clock began to irritate my eyes. Hmm. Uh, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Uh, Kimino no wa. Your name. Do you remember your name? Why would you want to know that? I just realized that I don't know what to call you. Sorry, I... Ryo. My name's Ryo. Ryo, I'm Suryo. <laughs> <laughs> the moment I heard that name, the person in front of me gained a clear outline for the first time. The amber flash of his gaze, the fingertips touching my towel, there were no longer things to be afraid of. I don't remember my last name. Oh. I, I'm, I'm Suo. Suo Keto. Um. What are you planning to do now? I tried to cushion, I tried to cushion the question as best I could, but all Rio did was lower his eyes. I have no plan. I can't remember a single thing. We've, we've been over this, actually. In already his gaze, Rio made a bitter, self-depreciating smile. Depreciating? That's appreciating. Appreciating? Appreciating. Um, can I say something strange? What? Um, if it's okay with you, you can stay here until your memory turns. Huh? Do you have any idea what you're saying? <laughs> oh, I'm being too meddlesome again, aren't I? I'm sorry, I just... Don't you remember what I did yesterday? I, I do. Uh, you were confused at the time. There's... No way I could blame you for that. It's perfectly understandable to wake up somewhere strange, pick up some scissors, and try to stab everyone we see. It's, that's normal. That's definitely the stranger I want in my house. <laughs> All the time. Who I've just met. Today. Ah, oh, God. <laughs> I suppose you got a point. Still. Oh, and my parents are actually away for an overseas trip at the moment, so we've got uh, empty rooms to spare, so... I don't think that's, uh, the issue here. We also need to look at disbelief on his face. You... don't want to stay here? More like, do you want me to? I mean, you're in trouble, aren't you? Rio's eyes widened in a uh, surprise. Um... I... Appreciate the help. Sensor came from a low, barely audible voice. Sure thing. When my parents gone, you'd have plenty of <laughs> you'd have plenty of rooms to pick from. Ah yes. Let me just invite this random stranger who literally tried the stab yesterday and I found bleeding this morning from his stomach into my house while no one else is home with me. I'll be home alone with this stranger. <laughs> <laughs> How excellent that I was hesitant to allow a stranger to our private space, so I ended up guiding him into uh, our guest room instead. This is where we kept our futons. Uh, you'll find the bathroom down the hall. I opened a closet and helped him lay down a futon. After that, I can just explain everything else he'd need now. Once we were finished bathing, I left some of my clothes, which were definitely too big for him because he is. <laughs> He's a giant. Like, the other kid's like a normal, like, height. This 15 year old guy here is like an actual giant. They're like a touch baggy on him, but nothing too extreme. I fit shockingly well for like. Look at this height difference. Like, like, like it's a lot. Like, that, that that's his eye line. It goes straight across. Like, it's like here. Like, that shirt would not fit. <laughs> it would be really big. Uh, pretty big house you got here. You think so? I think we can see the cursor, because I can just be like, rah, 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 and just like, cause, you know, chaos here. I wouldn't necessarily say it was big, but, though perhaps for someone living alone. Still, taking care of a house this size was no easy task. I didn't realize that once my mother left. 
how many more sad puppy things can we squeeze into the story? <laughs> All the more reason for you to stay, though. I could use the help. My room's on the second floor. Don't hesitate to call if uh, you need me. If you don't, uh, sorry, hesitate me if you need something. Sure. Good night. Good night. There's a telescope in the background. Ooh. We got here. We have star themed. We have a telescope, which is star. Is this space themed? It's gonna be like star themed, space themed. My brain continued working at the full throttle even after I climbed into bed. There's so much reading. I know this is the visual novel, but like so much reading. Who was real, really? And what was he doing out there in the rain? Could he have been involved in some kind of accident? The shock from that would explain his memory loss. Might very well turn out to be someone dangerous. <laughs> I know when I find people bleeding on the street, I'd be like, you should come home with me. Especially when my parents are... <laughs> come, ho come over. My parents are home. <laughs> I wonder what my parents would have said if they had they been there. I shook my head. Even uh, even if that were the case, he would he meant no threat to me now. He meant no threat to me? Interesting. Uh, plus, he had no one to else rely on. I kind of feel like that some of this maybe isn't translated perfectly, but like it's it's perfect. It's, it's like perfectly like enough. <laughs> that was the word. And besides, I couldn't bring myself to throw at a person with such a lonely look in their eyes. Stuck in a town he didn't recognize with no memories to help him. That's been hard for on his nerves. That said, Mija, huh? Sound like something straight out of a movie. Or a visual novel. I slowly drifted off to sleep. Mm hmm. Ah, look at the time. Ma, why didn't you wait? I definitely forgot my mother wasn't here. Morning. Oh. Good morning. I maybe have forgotten that I, uh, I led a strange person to my house. I completely forgot about my parents on the trip. And the fact that a stranger was now staying in my house. I totally forgot all of those events. Okay, let's let's just just a quick break here. Let's let's go over what he just forgot there. He forgot that his both of his parents had left, that he'd gone to a funeral, seen this boy, then found him in the street, dying of like hyperphobia or something, one day, and taking him home and him all stabbing him, which is pretty memorable. And then after all of that, you're like Oh, that, 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 like, stayed in his mind so much that he remembered him for a second day, where he looked, like, went out and looked for him, found him bleeding on the ground, and then took him home and invited him to stay. And you forgot about all of those events? Would your dreams not be consumed by this? That would be, that would be kind of stressful, would it? And this is really fun music to be like, I found a person dying on the street. <laughs> so what are you going to do now, Ryo? I thought the frozen rice and ate it uh, with a bit of, uh, Pollock roe? I don't know what Pollock is. After helping myself with some pickles, the dark-skinned youth looked at me in, in my direction. I need to go to school now. Uh, do you think you'd be okay on your own? Do you also go to school? I frankly don't know how old you are. You have been cobbly chewing his food until now. Suddenly frozen up with his eyes wide, uh, wide his eyes. You were just gonna leave me alone? In your house? <laughs> it was like equally confused about like everything he's like okay found a guy bleeding on the street uh, he tried to stab me i'm gonna invite him home and just leave him here he can he can just have free roam over my house huh you prefer to come with me to school i'm not sure that's a good idea i'm not gonna do that obviously i just don't know why you'd feel safe leaving a stranger in your house while you're away <laughs> yeah yeah so that's a dumb idea <laughs> I could rob you and stuff. You know, stuff. I, could, I can't think of another crime off the top of my head. <laughs> well, I mean, you're not the kind of person to do that, though, right? You literally just met him yesterday in, in a state of him, like, presumably being involved in gang violence and being left on the, like, the sidewalk for dead. Like, <laughs> I don't know where you're getting the assumption about the man who woke up confused with amnesia and tried to stab you. Like, doesn't... <laughs> he feels like a... You know, he feels like a good guy here. No idea. You wouldn't do anything of that sort. I'm sure of it. I've known you for what? Two days, maybe? 
you, you won't, right? <laughs> he's, he's getting like less and less confident. He's like, you're, you're not gonna rob me, right? Right? R real? Right? <laughs> As I tilted my head with a smile, Rio simply averted his eyes. I'm not planning to rob you, at least. See? Look, all I'm saying is that you should really be more cautious about letting strangers into your house. You think so? Yeah. With that, Rio stood up and uh, carried his dishes to the sink. Ah, I didn't realize it was this late. I gotta go now. I'll head out as well, then. Huh? You're going somewhere? Maybe, if you'd be okay with it. But, but I don't want to spend the day sitting alone at some stranger's house. It's kind of weird. By the way, my club practice usually ends around 7. Make sure to come back by then. 7? That is... Isn't that really late for club practice? It's like, when I was in like high school, I think it was like... We were done at like 2.09 for some strange reason, because our our day started like at like... I think it started like at 8.02 and ended at like... <laughs> Was it, you know, it, it, they were all like really abnormal numbers. It wasn't like anything like a whole number. But, like it definitely by the latest, we're going home by five. Like, because like the after school activity should be that long. Like that, that's a long break. He's staying at school for, like another five hours. Or okay, let's let's pretend this school ends at like three or something. It's still like four hours. That's a lot. I might if I feel like it. You're gonna be one. Did I miss a sentence? Nah, whatever. Uh, one final glance before closing the door. I gotta hurry as well. All right, I'm off. After announcing my departure to a now empty house with a random person I just picked up off the literal sidewalk who was dying. You know that guy actually recovered really well from being stabbed in the stomach, or sorry, bleeding from the stomach. Presumably stabbed, but like, he has a fascination with scissors. I locked the door and left. Not having anyone see me off uh, felt kind of lonely. Besides the stranger I picked up, he definitely saw me off. I wanted to see Rue off at least, but even though uh, he had just left the house moments earlier, he was nowhere to be seen. Is this the street that's just in every anime, by the way? <laughs> like, that, that looks super familiar. <laughs> morning, Keizo. I heard a voice from beside me and turned towards it with a smile. Uh, morning. Wow, look at the time. You might want to hurry. Y yeah, you're right, uh, Mamiya. Mamiya? I made a warm smile. His name is Mamiya. Roll title. <laughs> he was a close friend of mine. Who also happened to be invisible. Ah, there it is. <laughs> well, you thought invisible people only exist in fiction? Sure enough. That initially confused me as well. I mean, I just started hearing voices coming from... Ah, there. <laughs> now it's making sense. <laughs> Why he's letting strangers into his house. <laughs> Because he can see invisible people and he hears voices. <laughs> Come from Finair. My first thought was that must have been a ghost. Some days, I would sprinkle salt over my room, and others, I kept uh, troubling and crying in bed and unable to fall asleep. But as time passed, I started putting the pieces together. My male's not a ghost. Now, though you, could, uh, you couldn't see him, he did absolutely exist. He was also one of the few people who truly understood me. This invisible thing that other people can't hear, and only I can hear. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Soro. You're looking better now. Can you still love you when I take it? Yeah, you could say that. Did you catch a cold? Uh, did you catch the last night's show? I did. It was about some guy with uh, amnesia. Boy, that's a uh, right on the nose, huh? Amnesia. The moment I heard that word, my heart skipped a beat. How, how coincidental. How about you, sir? Did you see it? The boy of Amnesia? What? No, uh, no. I, I was really tired last night, so I ended up slipping through it. You lost, man. It was great. It generally made me think about what I would do if I lost my memories. Isn't it funny how this relates to your exact circumstances? <laughs> you think Amnesia really a thing? I mean, outside of movies. Yeah, that's, that, that's what happens when the brain just... <laughs> when you damage the brain, you damage the connections that it has in it, so that you might lose your memories. Movies. I recall the young man that had left my house earlier this morning. It was entirely possible that I had gotten involved with the very thing they were discussing. Are we sure the boy's real if we're seeing invisible people? Maybe that guy's like another invisible person. 
I felt my cheeks heat up. Alright, that's it for today's practice. Thank you very much. Prac what am I practicing? Huh? I found Ryo sitting near the front gate of my house. Yue, surprise me. What are you doing here? You locked the door, you dumbass. I have no way to get in. Do you want me to break into your house? Like, what, what the fuck do you think? I'm waiting. You, you told me to come back before dinner. And also, I told you where I hide my keys. You could have just waited for me inside. What? Sue? <laughs> Stop giving this stranger all of your personal information. <laughs> you have let him into your house, healed him, said you could live here, and you have given him a key to your house. You are begging to be robbed. <laughs> and or killed. <laughs> as far as you're aware, this guy probably is involved in gang violence. <laughs> As waited from inside. It's your fault. Huh? You really don't think things through. If you found me inside your house, you just end up wondering if I moved or taken something. It's not really a great feeling to have. If I if I used your key, which you told me where it was, and went into your house, you'd think I'm robbing you. <laughs> I can't do that because that would make me look bad. Did, did you did you wait for me here just to give me peace of mind? Yes. <laughs> Well, dress so lightly, too. Got a problem with it? This is probably why he keeps all his dying of hypothermia outside. He just puts on, like, one shirt, then hops out in the middle of winter. <laughs> uh, how long have you been here? How if I know? I don't have a watch. It's a miracle I'm even here on time. <laughs> Real averted his gaze. His ears went beet red. Sorry, were beet red. As, re as I grabbed Rio's hand, I noticed that his fingers had turned from red to cold. Uh, turn around for the cold. He's just not dead today. Because ev every time we found him, he was like in stages becoming more and more dead. The touch of his freezing hand made me understand. But he had generally didn't have anywhere else to come but here. Anywhere else to come but here. To go but here would make more sense as a sentence, but you know. What do I know? <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Let's hurry inside. I'll get you something nice and warm to drink. Where were you during the day? What would you like to know? <laughs> oh, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. Downtown, I figured I'd look for something I might recognize. That was really thorough, too. Wait, does that mean you managed to remember something? Nope, not a thing. <laughs> he gets his memory back and is like, wait a minute. I love robbing and killing people. <laughs> That's why I was on the ground. Stat. <laughs> I keep saying stab, I'm just assuming that. Because how else do you end up on the ground with, like, a severe stomach wound? Not a thing. I see. Anyway, a uh, bit of food should cheer you up. Uh, there's still something in the Kara... Kara... -ga? I... I don't know this word. <laughs> that my mom left for me. Is that an English word? It has to be Japanese. Because it's Kara... -ge. Kara... -ge? Kara... -ge? Yes, he doesn't know the word either. <laughs> you don't know what karaga is? It's a type of fried chicken that... Do you think I'm stupid or something? No, not at all. Where's this karaga of yours? Exclaim. In the fridge. I'll go microwave it for you. Just sit back, relax, and wait for uh, me here, okay? Relax. Like, like I could do that. I'm in some stranger's house, then I... What if he's the killer? That looks like a killer's face to me. <laughs> he's abducted the poor boy. <laughs> Even the scent of the place is unfamiliar. Yeah. Sorry, it took so long, Ryo. I brought this kaguro guy and put some rice in the uh, condiments. What is this? Hmm? You mean this book? It's been there for so long, as I remember. I recall rereading it multiple times uh, back in elementary school. Ryo? You know how to read, right, Ryo? I know this book. The protagonist is a prince in the kingdom of night. So Final Fantasy 50. 
He travels the world in search of the blue sky because none of his subjects know what it looks like. So, Final Fantasy 40! <laughs> Did I get it right? Yeah, that's exactly how the story goes. Wait, did he say night? Yeah, he's looking for the day, right? Ryu. I guess memories do return after a while. Visibly relieved, Ryu smiled in front of me for the first time. I remember that I hate living at other strangers' houses. <laughs> Just leaves. Our life together turned out to be a lot nicer than I anticipated. I didn't need to pay him any of my uh, special attention. I finally had someone to play video games with to the boot. He didn't come across as much of a gamer, but despite his initial clumsiness, he desperately strove to improve his play. I had never imagined- can we are we playing a game inside a game now? I never imagined that one day be eating potato chips while having an all-night gaming uh, session with someone. Nothing with him was tons of fun. I think this really counts as a gaming session. It's like 4 in the morning. Well, it's 4.30. <laughs> That's all night, but it's not like a gaming session, because it's a visual novel. It's more rude. I'm back. Time, uh... Hey, you're kind of late today. Whoa, you're covered in soot. What happened? Did you get in a fight? Here. Huh? He awkwardly hands me a bunch of yen bills. He, he definitely robbed someone. <laughs> huh? What's this for? I'm paying rent. I found a job yesterday. He found a job and I can't get a guy to it. Can I take a bath first? Oh, of course, but uh, th there's really no need for you to pay rent. You can stay here until your memories return and... I just felt I needed to do something. I'll go crazy otherwise. Just say memories. So he had one memory return, which was the book. So he has to have one more, then we kick him out. Oh. Forget it. Blah. I've had some warm papers uh, smelling distinctly of cro... Croquettes? Crickets? Croquet. Cro Croquettes. Pressing against my face. I got these from a street vendor. Figured you might want them since uh, you're running out of food because of me. Anyway, I'm off to take that bath. Jeez. Wow, he actually got a job. It's better than me. It's more of an adult than me. <laughs> this is this is becoming too relatable for me. <laughs> I haven't adopted a strange boy yet, though, so... <laughs> I made some late-night snacks from the leftovers I found in the fridge. It might have been a bad idea, though. Oh, that was actually a great idea. The taste was... Uh, these tastes amazing. That's not what I meant. Well, whatever. I'm glad you like them, at any rate. Oh, I'll take care of the dishes. There's no need. I'm used to doing them all the time. But I can't just allow guests to. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I think it was part of your peg rent. You just watch TV in the meantime. Like, you, you've literally let this guy into your house free of charge. Like, I could at least help her out. Like, jeez. Okay. All the time, huh? Is this what my life used to be like? Still feeling a bit of guilt about letting uh, Rio do the dishes. I, nonetheless, ended up turning on the TV. As a trusty old CRT world to life, a brief piece of scrolling text showed up at the bottom of the screen. It read, The truth about the end of the world. A bunch of dubious-looking adults were having a serious argument about something. The celebrities presented would respond with exaggerated reactions and attempt to make the whole thing more exciting for the audience. I put the plates on the shelf. You don't need to do that. Uh, you don't need to go that far, but thank you. What's on TV? How do you feel about all this end of the world stuff? Is the world actually going to end? Yeah, it will happen this year, at least according to these people. Hmm. First time I hear about it. Or second time. What do I know? I lost my memory. Seriously? It's been the talk of the whole town. There's no way you'd uh, go to school and not even hear about it. Oh, the yeah, amnesia. Yep. Sorry, I I'm the asshole. <laughs> what would you do if the world ends tomorrow? Rio sat down, uh, sat down, sat down some distance away from me as I waited for his response. For a brief moment, he averted a sharp gaze and then glanced to the side before finally speaking up. Not a thing. Why? Because there's nothing to do. He stared into the distance with a defeated look. Because I just spend my day like I always do, then go to sleep. That's it. I see. Since there came a bit of a surprise, I'd assume most people would want to do something special for the last day. Under normal circumstances, you would have to stay. In, uh, you would have to stay in the line and obey the rules of society. 
If the world was coming to an end, then that off flat window, you would technically do anything you wanted. Well, at least the girl sitting next to me in class thought so. I kept thinking about Ryo's answer as the TV droned on and on. That's right, I'll say the disappearance of the sun sounded like the most valid theory. And what would happen then? Would mankind go extinct? Not necessarily, a few hundred individuals should in theory possess the antibodies necessary to survive in harsh conditions. Antibodies? This sounds like conspiracy to me. <laughs> As humans, we are all different. Naturally, some of us adapt better to certain environments than others. Only a few hundred survivors. Wow. The video started playing. It showed a boy living in the earth that had been become dried up wasteland. I briefly imagined what it'd be like. The, uh, what it would be like to be that boy. For some reason, I had this feeling that even if my parents, classmates, and all adults I knew died, I'd still be able to survive. I wonder if tomorrow will really come. So, every single day. It was all the people. Well, it was all that people could talk about. Is the world really going to end? There would be no next year then. No one really knows if the sun's going to come up for the next day. I suppose you're right. Could just ex could just disappear according to the news apparently. About it. How about you? Huh? What would you do if the world ended tomorrow? I'm not sure. It's hard to predict how I'd act. I see. Wow, look at the time. Uh, we've got to brush our teeth and go to sleep. Speaking of that, look at the time. It is getting late. We should definitely brush our <laughs> brush our teeth and go to sleep. So we'll continue this another day, guys. Remember, you haven't uh, subscribed to the show. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Help us grow. And we'll continue this another day. Bye! What a perfect break point, huh? Game <laughs> has a good place to just like actually put a break. Perfect. Otherwise, it's going to go on forever. Oh well. <laughs>